So are aliens on Earth? We are told by NASA that we have never communicated with extraterrestrial beings and contact has never been made. With over 100 billion stars above us, the probability of this is highly unlikely. We are either not looking correctly or someone is not allowing this information to become publicly known. We only have to look at the last 70 years and examine the thousands of UFO sightings and physical accounts made by individuals around the world. Although the Navy or military state they do not know of this, you only have to listen to the Bob Lazar on the Joe Rogan show to know there is another level to this reality on Earth. Make of it what you will, but some of these aircraft are beyond physical comprehension. These craft completely defy anything we have within our current structure of science and technology. Besides the Roswell incident in 1947, there are many other accounts of crashed UFOs. The Aztec UFO crash happened a year later in 1948 in the Aztec Desert, New Mexico. A disc-shaped craft came hurtling out of the sky and crashed into the desert. Apparently, alien bodies were recovered and UFO technology by the US military. US Navy filed patents such as high temperature superconductors, gravitational wave generators, compact fusion reactors and high energy electromagnetic field generators. Sounds like something of a sci-fi film. All of these patents are perfect to build something for intergalactic space travel. The hybrid aerospace underwater craft claim to be able to engineer the fabric of our reality at the most fundamental level, according to Dr. Pei, by bending the laws of physics as we know them. US naval officers state these to be official and exist. So what's going on? Do the US Navy use a different type of science to the public science we are told? The Tic Tac UFO from the files the Pentagon released in the recent years is again more than solid evidence that we have some sort of a higher intelligence around us. So at this point you're like, no way, different science? Darwin's theory is what I learned at school. This is a conspiracy theory. Yes, it's a conspiracy and maybe for humans best interests. But these are not just theories. Let us continue. In 1897, a cigar-shaped UFO supposedly crashed into a windmill in Texas. The report in Dallas Morning News two days after the crash claimed the pilot of the ship was not an inhabitant of this world. The Phoenix Lights in Arizona, 1997, where a series of UFOs were sighted for a few hours by thousands of people. Throughout all our history, we have symbolism in art, writings and work depicting something of the skies. The gods, some sort of flying craft. We have Egyptian hieroglyphics, which is a language based on star constellations, which have strong influences from the Phoenicians. We have the Celts, tribes of Africa, the Aborigines, and on and on. It is laced into every culture on our planet. In Irish mythology, in the Tuatha Dé Dada the ancient text described that the Tuatha Dé Dada appeared in flying ships surrounded by clouds. Even the Bible refers to other worldly origins when speaking of the disciples. They are not of the world even as I am not of the world. In the Old Testament, the story of Ezekiel, where he describes a carriage with wheels descending from the sky, piloted by human-like beings, covered very well in Eric von Daniken's book, The Chariots of the Gods. Considering the Bible has been rewritten many times, what does this all actually mean? Let me know in your comments below. Moving forward to World War II, you had Hitler's interest in the occult and free energy technology. What was unique about Nazi Germany is it was the only occult-obsessed dictatorship. 
The scientist von Braun developed the V2 rocket for Hitler to bomb Belgium. After the collapse of the Third Reich, von became part of Operation Paperclip, where German scientists were taken to the US and employed by the US government. Von then reinvented himself as a spaceflight advocate. In 1960, he was with NASA, where he became the chief architect on Saturn V, the rocket sending Neil Armstrong and the Apollo 11 crew to the moon. You have many astronauts, Eckhard Michel, Katie Coleman and Dr. Brian O'Leary, that have had sightings while in space, and many the government cannot explain. You had the former NASA engineer Clark McLennan who claims he saw a nine-foot alien on board the Kennedy Space Center. Every US president has to decide whether they disclose the existence of UFOs. Some are very vocal about it. When Donald John Trump became president, he created the Space Force. Was this to bridge the alleged breakaway civilizations and remove the distance we are from these technologies? Just alone with the sighting seen at the famous UFO base in Area 51, Nevada, California, the deep underground bases and alien connections should be enough to make people realize the reality we are living in is not what it seems. But Area 51 is just the tip of the iceberg. In 1980, Rendlesham Forest, Suffolk in England, at the height of the Cold War, huge UFO sightings were seen over a series of days, labelled as the British Roswell. Strange activity started happening in the forest, which sat between two American Air Force bases. Many military personnel at the bases reported lights moving around in the woods. Crafts landed. Locals in the town were calling police because of strange activity with electrical devices. Two of the military witnesses to a landing of the craft were able to recall a binary code. And when this binary code was translated, it read, Exploration of Humanity 666-8100, Continuous for Planetary Advancement. So much happened over the course of those two days in Rendlesham incident, but one of the most interesting connections is how the base had a huge amount of nuclear energy being stored within it. The reports state the crafts were drawn to these aircraft hangars knowing exactly where this nuclear power was being stored. Maybe these were future humans coming to save humanity, or even save themselves. Then, of course, we have the original Roswell incident in 1947, where apparently a weather balloon crashed. But there are too many stories around this to say so much more was happening. Did the US military retrieve technology to build UFOs? Was an alien captured? At the exact same time as Roswell, maybe not connected, but strange how Operation Paperclip was happening. In 1947, the transistor radio came out using the first ever recorded circuit boards. There was a boom in technology. There is a lot of evidence that suggests President Eisenhower met with an extraterrestrial race on the 20th of February 1954 and signed what was called the Grieder Treaty. The treaty was for in exchange for advanced technology the aliens would be allowed to make experiments on livestock, minerals and a small group of humans. Although we cannot prove exactly what happened at Edwards Air Force Base, maybe X-Files was telling us something. We can certainly without a doubt conclude that some advanced technology exists and the more you look into it, the more alien it becomes. If we were already living amongst an alien race, what makes you think you would know about it? Do we know of every culture that lives around our neighbouring streets? And if this intelligence had the ability to build craft or advanced technology like so many have observed, then they would probably have the intelligence to hide themselves when they are amongst society, especially with humans around. 
What's crucial to mention here is that we also only see 2% of our light spectrum. That's our narrow bandwidth of perception. Many levels of reality could exist in that 98%. Within a wireless signal, do we see this video flying into your computer? Do you see the conversation you have on the phone floating through the air? So why is it not possible for other beings to exist around or within that? However, we must realize that there is not any physical proof of aliens existing known to the public. Only people's stories, accounts, abductions, sometimes even meeting beings. Again, there are too many to ignore. And if this is only people's imaginations, why do people describe the same type of beings over and over again? There have been many accounts of abduction stories, especially in the United States. These can include individuals, but there have been a few cases where whole towns have sensed a loss of time, or many people have been abducted. Often through regressional hypnotherapy, people activate memories and can explain missing time. Again, there are too many stories to ignore. One of the most interesting places which contains a huge amount of physical evidence and is full of UFO and paranormal activity is Skinwalker Ranch in Utah, USA. UFOs and huge amounts of paranormal activity happens. Wolves the size of horses that can stand up like giants. Humanoid type beings, strange shape-shifting creatures. The list goes on and on. Once populated by the Ute and Navajo American Indians, which became a war ground during the Civil War, the Navajo cursed the land because of the Ute betrayal. But these giant creatures, strange beings, were all drawn into the walls before this war. Maybe this is a ley line, some sort of gateway, a convergence of land energies, maybe a portal. It is called Skinwalker Ranch because a skinwalker is a person with the ability to transform into any different type of animal at will. A shapeshifter. If you accidentally lock eyes with a skinwalker, they can absorb themselves into your body and take control of your actions. On this research, you begin to see the depth to these rabbit holes of aliens, ufology and related subjects. A personal perspective of UFO accounts is hard to prove to be correct because ultimately it's your own personal experience unless it's physically documented by video, especially in this day and age. It's very hard to prove. But when you hear and see the same stories in different cultures, artwork, history from all different parts of the world, it would be stupid to say that this is purely phantom and not real on any level. So, do aliens exist? In my opinion, yes, they certainly do. But if we were given all this technology and information, we wouldn't get to understand the contrast of dark and light, the challenges that we have to overturn. The future we are moving into has to leave these old mind patterns behind. And for aliens to live in peace amongst us, or maybe they are already amongst us, it would be good if humans started becoming peaceful in themselves. Thank you for watching the Hidden History series and please subscribe if you haven't already to keep up to date with the weekly films and videos.